Hey YouTube, what's going on? Thanks for checking in today. Hey, this is going to be a quick VR to Midwest Prepper. He did an awesome video on this triangle design thing he did, which I've tried to mimic here. And I just wanted to give some comments and add something to what he already provided. Really good. He did like three videos on it. Um, just talking about where your focus of your preparedness should be and what, uh, you know, your base of all your preparedness should focus on 90% basically versus kind of the way things are presented, especially here on YouTube. Really good stuff. So go check that out once you're done here. But uh, I just wanted to add a couple things and just uh, discuss a little bit. Um, I don't think he meant to necessarily put it the way he put it the way he did. I mean, the way I took it, I took it in a way that I don't think he meant to present it, but um, we'll see <laughs> how this goes. But just one thing I would add, if you were going to design this matrix in like a triangle fashion like he did, in that your base of your triangle is 90% of the things you're going to deal with in your life that you need to prepare for that have really the least effect if you're preparing. I think that's the key. These are going to have the least big effects on you as long as you're doing some basic preparedness, but they're the most likely to happen, uh, especially where you live. And one thing I've done is I've really narrowed it down to what... If you look at really what can happen in your area uh, here and took an out, taken out some of the things that don't apply to me, just to give an example, you know, he had like everything that could possibly happen to everybody, which was good for a visual. But just to also give another visual, I've added, think about your man-made risks separate from your natural risks. Some of their effects can be the same, but some of your preparations are going to be different. In particular, he was kind of... I know he's big into firearms, but he was trying to downplay the use of firearms. But they are one of your baselines of preparedness because of these things over here. Home invasion, theft, civil unrest on up the... I mean, these are the reasons the firearms exist. Not for this up here, your man-made risk. But it's also a tool for other uses as well. But I just wanted to highlight that and that it is one of our baseline preparedness things because of these things um not because of this up here not because of the red dawn scenario that's not why you own firearms you uh, primarily it's for self-protection in small elements small things uh that could happen but and this is just really a small example i guess you'd say and really covers the gamut of all the things that could happen when you think about not only food and water economic preparedness uh, financial uh, situation, uh, death in the family, whether that's in, inside your where you habitate or your parents or um, your children even, uh, after they leave the house potentially, depending on who you are, that's always going to have a big effect, especially economically, but probably uh, in the long run. So and these are all so these are all your man-made threats. <clears throat> and for me, there are many more man-made concerns. And I've tried to draw a line of like how far up the pyramid this can really affect uh, what I do. Like a job loss is going to affect you. Uh, and I've designated what I call a bug out zone. Like where up as you go up the pyramid of events, could you really get to the point where you had to bug out, right? Um, and uh, this is a planning factor and something to think about of where you would place something on the pyramid like he designed it. And it could fluctuate or be different. Um but in particular, and we've talked about designating uh, threats before, but, you know, something like a house fire could be man-made or natural, so it's kind of in the middle. But it can range all the way up to a bug out to very minimal effect. But those are things, that's why we have fire, fire detectors. That's why we have fire extinguishers, you know, multiple of them, hopefully in your house, garage, shop, places like that. Things like that that we prepare for that really can have a huge effect so the fact you could have to leave, leave your place if it was everything, you know, wildfires big around here, drought, drought, something we've been in for the last few years could, you know, if it drug on, we could, that could lead to us having to bug out earthquake, snowstorm. I don't, you get snowed in is what it would end up happening, but it melts eventually. But, you know, talk about food and everything that you need to get through that type of event. Uh, and then your big 500 year flood on the natural side, before you get to the earthquake, the big Kahuna 9.0 that uh, we could potentially be facing one day 
but uh, you know, starting off, eh, 5.0 is probably something that could have damage. And you know, we've had 4.5 point, point stuff that hasn't had effect. But if it was closer, if we had a 5.0 really, really close, it could have some significant effects. Um, whether it be power outage, water outage, you know, it affects kind of some things over here. But uh, it could go all the way up to the big one and having to leave the area as well eventually after, especially like we've talked about, after you're... A lot of this can be time-based. After an earthquake scenario, you've endured it, you've bugged, you know, you've sheltered in place. But after your stores run out, after you've exhausted a lot of your things, you could have to end up bugging out even without a big earthquake, without being that big. So time can play a factor in how all this plays out too. Um, especially like loss of electricity, loss of utilities uh, for us here. And just those would be the most effect on you. Uh, nuclear war, very top, tippy top of the pyramid there. Invasion, you know, think of invasion, uh, armed conflict, if you wanted to labor it like that. But the 500-year flood, very unlikely, but uh, would be a bug-out scenario potentially. If nothing else, because everything else would be washed out <laughs> around us, uh, you would there wouldn't be much uh, economic base if it was something that large. So I just wanted to... Give an idea of another way to look at it, especially with man-made versus natural, because on really we're facing so many more hazards on the man-made side, where the natural stuff is very unpredictable. But um, your base of preparedness always leads to helping out prepare for this stuff, like he talks about. So go check out Midwest Preppers video. We'll talk to y'all later. Remember, prepare, prepare hard, especially now. The free.